Now, as we said, the light comes into the vessel, but also the light leaves the vessel. So there's a ratzov ashov. There's there's a uh, a movement where light comes in, but also light leaves. Comes in, leaves. There's a dynamic, a dynamic movement of light in in vessel. So the- like to uh, um, actually go and, and uh, take a look at the source sheet, you even have it in front of you as you're listening to the Shi'ur, go to our website, which is eblearningcircles.org, um, go to Jewish Resources, scroll down to Parsha Videos, and you'll find the source sheet right there. Now today, uh, we have a, a beautiful Sfat Emet. Rabbi uh, Yehuda Leib, Altar of Ger, uh, late um, 19th century, and Hanukkah is beautiful, a little bit, uh, it touches a little bit on the flow of light as per Luriani Kabbalah. And how is, how is, so how is Hanukkah considered a minor holiday? What, the, what does that mean? Uh, the Sfatimah uh, is going to talk about that. Is Hanukkah related thematically or otherwise to any of the major Jewish holidays? How about spiritu- spiritually? Does Hanukkah have a, sp- a spiritual light? Does it harmonize with the light of other holidays? It's an interesting angle on, um, on Hanukkah. Usually we talk about, you know, the candle and about uh, religious freedom. And, uh, and, and the, here the Sfatemid is putting Hanukkah really in the context of uh, the, uh, the the holiday calendar, and also looking at how the in the context of the of the un- capitalistic understanding of light and vessel and and how all that works. But this historical event, uh, which uh, took place about the the middle of the Second Temple period, uh, it had to do with the uh, invasion of the Seleucid, uh, the Syrians, and the Greeks. And how that basically for, forbade the Jews from keeping mitzvahs and uh, studying Torah, and it it was basically a religious war for relig- for religious uh, freedom and autonomy in the land of Israel. Uh, and um, we know uh, that it the short end of the story, which we celebrate on Hanukkah, was good news. Uh, we we won uh, the the battle, but actually the war, of course, was lost. Uh, there was interesting uh, uh, conflict, civil war. Given all that history, the Sfasem is here right now. Is going to bring up an aspect, as you as you mentioned, of the of the of the Hanukkah uh, uh, yuntiv that uh, one would never uh, think of. I just want to add one more point to what you uh, you know you review is that uh, um, at the end of this war, they're they're rededicating the the Bet Hamikdash, the Temple. And we'll see how this is uh, connecting here with uh, with Fatimet, with the other holidays, etc. So, Chanukah Purim hem he'arot mirgalim. He says Chanukah, the holidays of Chanukah and Purim, which are the minor holidays, are um, the, uh, the, the, the channel the light or receive light from the major holidays, the the festive the festivals. Aka gimel regalim am froshim b'Torah. And now he explains the um, the three uh, festivals that are uh, clearly stated in the Torah um, are the what's called the written Torah. But um, opposite that, or, or corresponding to that, there are three uh, you could say holidays that come from the oral Torah. The three pilgrimage festivals, when a Jew was expected to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem uh, during the times of the temple, uh, on these three holidays. What are these three holidays that we find in the in the written Bible, in the Chumash? They are Pesach, Passover, Shavuos, and Sukkot. Not speaking right. about Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, or anything else. Right. And so these are called the three pilgrimage 
festivals. And what he's basically setting out is that that's in the written right. Torah, in the oral Torah, the Mishnah, the Gemara, the Midrashim, everything else that we have uh, in, uh, in the post-biblical period. Oh, we have other holidays. Some of them are very famous. Purim and Hanukkah are very famous, right? Very well observed. But these are not biblical. They happened later in history, as I mentioned right. at the very at the very outset. This right. happened a thousand years after the Torah was given. Right. Uh, right. Basically, right. the story of Hanukkah and Purim is a little right. bit uh, before that, a couple hundred years before that. So he's saying there is a reflection, an image which he'll, he'll discuss now, which aligns right. with what and why. But he's saying that just like in the written word, there are three essential pilgrimage. pilgrimage festivals, so too in the oral Torah, aligned with these three pilgrimage festivals, are, are festivals, which we'll discuss mm -hmm. now. And he explains further, And <laughs> And he says the principle is that these minor holidays that come to us later from the from the oral Torah, the the Mishnah and the Gemara, are uh, are they receive light from the major pilgrimage festivals that are, are written in the Torah, just like the moon receives light from the sun, as we all know. <laughs> he says. Now he says, because of uh, the uh, the power of uh, of the people of Israel. Uh, receiving and and fulfilling the pilgrimage festivals as as uh, uh, as called for. Uh, uh, there is a rishimu that is left. The rishimu is an impression. It's a kabbalistic uh, um, uh, principle that there's. It's like a footprint. It's like a uh, uh, an energy that's left. Uh, in the congregation of Israel, in, in the people, and from that energy, that imprint, that Rashimu, they were able to um, uh, to put forth other holidays. And now he says, how? And how does it correspond? So Chanukah receives light from the holiday of Sukkot. The Purim, Michaga Shavuot, and Purim receives light from the holiday of Shavuot. And we'll, right. I'll, I'll, fin I'll finish reading the the Sfatemet um, uh, uh, here, and then we'll go back and explain that a little bit. Michaga Pesach, Mikavim Anuliot, Mikavim Anuliot Od. From the holiday of Passover, we look forward that there will be a holiday that comes out of that. That hasn't come yet. This is a verse from Micah, the prophet, that um, that Micah said, uh, like the days that you came out of Egypt, I will show you miracles, right? So there will be a time when uh, that, that will parallel, that will reflect that uh, experience. There seem right. to be only, it seems to be three versus two. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. Right? What happened to, uh, if uh, Sukkot is Hanukkah and uh, Shavuos is Purim for some reason, then what happened yeah. to Pesach, to Passover? So he says, hey, that's when Mashiach comes, when the Messiah that's comes, right. that's uh, going to be that. So now we have to just see if we can uh, take a deep dive and try and discover, because he, do, he doesn't do it. He just says, oh, Hanukkah is, uh, Hanukkah is yeah, Sukkot. Comes from Sukkot, yeah. Hanukkah is, is, a, is, a, is a reflection of Sukkot. Okay, but he doesn't explain what the connections are. Right. That's right. So, yeah. So we could do that now. I think there's another thing that is worth uh, clarifying here. What is this thing that one holiday gets light from another holiday? And I think we need to understand a little bit of, about the Lurianic 
scheme of how you know the 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 you know the vessel in light and how- this this uh, correlation between Hanukkah and Sukkot, which at first glance uh, I wouldn't make such a uh, where why would you make such a connection? I mean, oh, uh, compare Hanukkah to Sukkot. Well, whoa, right? They seem yeah. like totally opposite ends of the world. Right. But interestingly, so- the Sepharim do. Uh, draw uh, uh, quite a few connections uh, between yeah. the the uh, the Hasidic uh, Svarim and this Midrashim on it as well, and even Yosef Karo and the Shulchan Aruch and his other mm-hmm. more Kabbalistic minded Svarim. So for the first connection is not so hard to get to because we see that uh, Sukkot is actually an eight day festival, mm-hmm. with, because with, it, with Shmini, which is uh, you know mm-hmm. with Shmini Atzeres, yeah. but in terms of the Karbanos. Uh, it was considered those eight days are considered one unit, uh, yeah. actually, in in terms of co- uh, comparing and contrasting the the sacrifices and whatnot. Yeah. And this, by the way, is very interesting because, according to Beis Shammai, as people might know, there, there's a, a difference of opinion as to how we light the menorah. According to Beis Shammai, we start with a full eight and eight, we decrease seven, seven six five four three two one. Yeah. That I'm not going to get into why he says that, but the par- well, the parallel is that on Sukkot, we start with many, many korbanos, dozens yeah. of korbanos, and every day we go less until on Shmini Atzeris we're left with one. Right. That That's a parallel also. Also, according to the Medrash, one of the things that the Syrian Greeks made illegal, there were three famous things, uh, Brismila, Rosh Chodesh, and Shabbos. But according to certain Midrashim, another thing they made illegal was Sukkot. So this is like a tikkun. So saying that there's a connection and a celebration in the Torah Shabbat of Sukkot and Hanukkah is a tikkun is fixing up that we couldn't celebrate Sukkot on during the times of of, right. uh, of of Hanukkah. And some people and, some people claim historically that Hanukkah was probably a belated Sukkot because they had captured the Beit Hamikdash and they could. And Sukkot was two months earlier, so they said, "Well, let's do, let's let's celebrate Sukkot." Yeah, but actually, Hanukkah was um, a belated Sukkot that then became its own holiday. And right, right. And I'll just I'll just throw one more out, and then we can get to the other point, which is also uh, pretty crucial. Uh, what is this whole idea of the Rashim of the Rashima? We said it. We were talking uh, last week. Uh, I'm sorry, two weeks ago. We were talking about Venosa. We 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 did a whole a lesson about that. Yaakov went Sukasa, Venosa, mm-hmm. Yaakov Sukasa, and we talked yeah. about that. So uh, he, and he made sukkahs. He made boo sukkahs. That's a, a sukkah yeah, yeah. for his animals. And uh, it says u u bana loy sukkahs. He built for himself a house and for the animals he built sukkah. Ubana Loi, he built for him, for himself and his family. Loi, Lamed Vav in Hebrew, mm. in Gematria, in numerical equivalence is 36. 36. Mm-hmm. So some people might know that 30, we 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 light a can uh, we light a total of, I believe, 36, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So we see that there are actual lines that can be drawn. There's one more connection with Billy. Ooh, okay. When when was the first temple dedicated by Shlomo Melech? On the, yeah, on Sukkot. On Sukkot. So we're rededicating the temple on Hanukkah. The first temple was dedicated when in, inaugurated on Sukkot. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So Hanukkah, it was, it was Hanukkah Tabait of the original temple was on Sukkot. So yeah, so you, right. you see a lot of these connections. It's not, it's not random, obviously. And, um, and then the question is, what does it mean from a spiritual perspective? What does it mean that uh, one holiday draws down light and that light is then reflected through a uh, pilgrimage holiday draws down light. Let's say Sukkot draws down light, and that light has right. a certain quality. And then that light is reflected through a minor holiday, right. like the moon reflects the, the sun. Principle of uh, that uh, the Ari 
HaKadosh teaches us of, of the Kli and, and, and Or, right? So he talks about here the, the Or, which is the light, the light that comes through the holiday. How does light come through the holiday? Because everything in, in, in the world, in creation, according to you know, the Kabbalah, is that um, there's a vessel, and there's a divine light that wants to fill the vessel. And there's also, the vessel also rejects the light. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, this, is, this is a complicated uh, uh, system there of, of, of light coming, being rejected, or yashar, or choser, it comes back. But the, the point is that the way um, the Bereshit, the, the reason that, that uh, the Torah, they, they say, starts with the letter bet is because it's, uh, you have these two things, right? You have a mekabel and you have a mashpia. So the light, the, the, the divine will is to always give, always, always send light. And the world is there to receive it. And that's the vessel. So we're here <clears throat> to both clarify the vessels, to make the vessels, so we can allow divine light in. And that is a challenge. So Sukkot is a vessel for a certain light. And when we fulfill the mitzvah, we're hopefully allowing the light to come in, right? So is Hanukkah, right? You know, the fact that that the light, now, as we said, the light comes into the vessel, but also the light leaves the vessel. So there's a Ratzov Ashov, there's, there's a, uh, a movement where light comes in, but also light leaves, comes in, leaves as a dynamic a dynamic movement of light in, in vessel. When the light leaves, it never leaves completely. There's a rishimu. There's a there's a um, a certain trace of it. There's certain. It's not there, but its energy is there. The chumash is really the the big hymn part of the Torah, and the the Torah Shmuel has more ours. We own it, right? Mm-hmm. And it become it becomes ours. So the idea, the the light, the light of Shavuos, of Pesach, of Sukkot are so high because they're divine. It's a divine light. And like you were talking about the Kalim. Right. So the vessel, in order to make a vessel, a vessel that we can relate to, right. so we have the comparable uh, idea of that particular kind of light bring, brought down to us, not in those events from 3,300 years ago, but in actual wars and historical events that we experienced on the ground post Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that becomes more of a relatable thing, a more of a way to, to get that light to shine in a way that we can relate to, which Mm -hmm. is possibly, by the way, I just want to say, there's a lot to say, but I just to summarize what I'm saying, like everybody does Hanukkah, right? It's so interesting. Yesterday, a, a, a friend of mine, a Facebook guy, uh, a, a Jewish guy sent me a, a th- uh, an article. Ellie, you're going to love this. Uh, uh, Ten reasons or 15 reasons why an atheist should celebrate Hanukkah. So there's something about the light of the of the oral of the of the. It's like it's something more relatable. I mean, the beauty that um, that as we celebrate Hanukkah, we're bringing in a light you know, a higher light that comes through Sukkot and that, you know, light from Sukkot comes from, you know, from history and from heaven and from, you know, this, it's only, it's just kind of, everything is, um, it's uh, mitzamtzem, you know, it comes down and down and down to us in a way that we can actually chew on it and enjoy it and as, right. as mortal human beings and uh, such a beautiful thing. And so I want to, on, on that note, okay. we shall be able to embody the rededication of, of uh, the temple that uh, we're celebrating on Hanukkah and then happened on Sukkot. And, uh, you know, this is uh, Yerushalayim Shalmala. In some ways, this is a rededication of, of our ability to connect to our spirituality, to connect to the... Um, I just want to, apropos about the atheists, and I'll, I'll conclude with that, is I was just... Um, the, the other day, I was thinking about when I, when I have discussions with atheists, one one of the ways I think to uh, like to think about it is like an atheist is really really good at playing at in, in the kids pool, and in the beach where I go in Haifa, you know, there's a kids pool on the boardwalk, but then there's the ocean, right? So the atheist is really really good at swimming in the kids pool and says there is no ocean, 
But if you step outside of the kid's pool and go down to the beach and you see the ocean, you know, you see there's a whole, you mm-hmm. know, there, there, there's more to it. Mm-hmm. I think that Hanukkah, the light of Hanukkah kind of connects us with, you know, the ocean, that which is beyond the ocean. So we'll end on that beautiful note. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> uh, this will be it for now. And uh, thank you for uh, learning with us again, uh, God willing, uh, next Wednesday, nine o'clock in the morning. Shalom, everybody. You know, click, click subscribe button. Doesn't cost you anything. Uh, we really appreciate that. Like to have that extra layer of connection with you. Uh, like and subs- subscribe. Come back um, next um, next Wednesday, nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Ahim Rabim Lo Yuklu